In this video, we're going to be looking at Folder Sync for Android, a network and cloud syncing app. Here it is in the Play Store. There's two versions, the free version and the pro version. Pro version is $4.99 and it removes ads. We'll be looking at the free version in this video. I've already got it installed. I'll open it up. Here is what it looks like. At the top here, we see our syncing status for all of our folders, enabling location in the background, our folder pairs, which is our syncing folders, and our cloud accounts. On the next tab, we have our folder pair. So all of the folders that we have syncing from our phone to the cloud will be listed here. On this tab under accounts, we'll have all of our cloud accounts that we can manage. On this tab, we have files where we can view all of our files on our system. For example, we have my internal storage and my SD card. And I have a favorite here that I needed to delete earlier. And on the About tab, we have information about the app as well as some configurations. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and add our account. We'll add a cloud account. So I'll go to the Accounts page and add, and we can see all of the cloud accounts and services that this app supports. We have things like Amazon S3, Box, Dropbox, FTP, Google Drive, Mega. We have NextCloud, OneDrive, FTP, S3 compatible, which is good for Backblaze, SugarSync, WebDAV, and more. I'm going to be connecting via WebDAV to my NAS. So I'll hit WebDAV and enter my login credentials. And I'll hit test. Once the test is complete, I'll hit save. And now I have my WebDAV connection. I'll go ahead and rename it to NAS. Save. Now we're ready to create a folder pair. On my system, my Android file system. I have a folder called Go Drive. This is where everything that I want to have synced from my phone to my NAS via WebDAV is going to be stored, effectively creating my own Google Drive. So what I would do is I would go to this tab, the second tab on folder pairs. So I'll go ahead and create a new folder pair. We're going to use my NAS account. I'll give this a name. Call it Go drive and we're syncing to the remote folder. We could do phone to cloud or cloud to phone or two way syncing. In this case, I'm just going to do a, I'm going to do a two way sync. So I'm going to put some files on my NAS and show you how it downloads onto my phone. And on my NAS, I'm going to sync my content to my go drive share on my NAS. Hit OK. And on my local folder, I'm going to look for my Go Drive folder that's on my phone. Here it is. So the remote folder is my NAS and the local folder is the folder on my phone. We can set up scheduled syncing. We can choose to sync subfolders, hidden files. I'm going to uncheck hidden files. Under advanced, we have options for overwriting older files. We can choose always or never. We can skip files. We can do an instant sync, exclude from force sync. We can retry sync if it fails, rescan media library, and some other options as well. I'm good with what I have, so I'll hit OK. Under connection, you can choose how you want to sync, whether you want the sync to only happen over Wi Fi, 4G. And I'm assuming if you had a 5G phone, over 5G, 2G, Ethernet connection, and so forth. In my case, I'm only going to do it on Wi-Fi. And notifications. You can turn on notifications for the sync success, when an error occurs, or when changes occur. I'll just turn all of those on. We'll hit save. And let me go back. And under filter, you can add files that you don't want to have synced. And now I have my folder ready to sync. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some files to my NAS, to my Go Drive share on my NAS, 
and we will see those files get brought down to my phone. All right, so I've got some files on my NAS, and I'm gonna hit sync and watch the sync progress happens. So we hit sync. If we go back here, we can see it's downloading files from our NAS, and it's done already. And now if I go to my files under my Go Drive folder on my phone, I can see this particles mp4, some thumbnails for my videos, and this thumbs db, which I should have put in my filters. And another thing that I'm going to do under advanced options, or actually under just sync options, is turn on sync deletions. This will make it so that if you delete something on either side of the connection, either on the remote folder or on your phone, the deletions will take place on the other side. So if I delete something on my phone, it'll be deleted on a NAS as well. This keeps things set up as a mirrored sync. So now I'll go back to my files and I'll delete this thumbs DB. And it's as simple as that. I've got another file synced on my server. And I'll go ahead and hit sync again. And when I refresh, I'll see those that the video's text file that I have. If you go back into settings, you can enable scheduling sync by toggling this on. And then you have the option to set the interval of your syncs from every 5 minutes to 15 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour, all the way to monthly and custom. And under custom, you can set the days, hours, and so forth. If you want it to be as short as possible, you can do every 5 minutes or just do a manual sync. If you go back, you can enable location in the background. And this is if you have your connection settings based on the SSID. I hit allow and okay. We'll go to permissions, location, and allow all the time. And that's it. I've deleted the go drive sync that I had. I still have the NAS account, but I deleted the sync to do a more specific sync. This time, I just want to sync my screen recordings and screenshots. So I'll go ahead and again go to account, NAS, and this time I'm going to do two remote folder. And I'm going to go to Go Drive. I'm going to create a folder on my NAS called Screen. We'll do screenshots first. Now create another folder. Screen recordings, and this one we're going to do screen recordings. I'll give it a name. For the task, we're going to do again one-way sync, and the local folder is going to be under my camera under screen recordings and I have all these screen recordings and we're going to not sync hidden files we will do instant sync and I do want sync deletions and that's pretty much it hit save I'll go ahead and quickly add my screenshots one-way sync to my screenshots folder on my NAS from my cameras screenshots folder and done you can also set up notifications and now what I'll do is go ahead and hit screen recording sync first because that's going to take the longest and we can see the progress this app is really fast at sending data so it's really nice and we'll just let this complete and then we'll sync our screenshots and all of this data is being sent to my NAS on my network via web tab the syncing has complete if I go to my jobs and click on the little clock icon here I can see the job and down here at the bottom I can see we've had 20 items synced up and it took about a minute and 45 seconds. I'll do the same for my screenshots and that didn't take any time.
And so now whenever I take screen recordings or screenshots, they can automatically be sent to my NAS. And of course, this can be done with any account that you add to your accounts with all of these services. Looking at some more options here at the top, you have the ability to see all of your jobs, your folder pairs, successful jobs, failed jobs, and what's currently being synced. Similarly with accounts, you can look at all your synced accounts, the ones in use, the ones not in use, and in files, you can select, you can choose to favor a directory. For example, if I hit this heart icon right here, and when I go to the menu, I can see the Go Drive shortcut right here in my list. We can search our files here. So videos, and obviously we get videos. At the bottom here, we have the ability to sort. We can sort by alphabetical order, file size, file extensions, and so forth. This little eye icon, if I go back to my file system here, will allow us to show hidden files and folders. We can select all items and run actions on them. And we can add a new folder. Under About, under Configurations, we can enable schedule syncing, enable notifications, and you have all your notification options here. We can enable pin access code, so you have to enter a pin in order to get into this app. And you can even set fingerprint, so I'll go ahead and enable this and set my pin code. For the purposes of this video, I'll just give it something easy. And timeout, we can set the timeout, 10 seconds, unlock with fingerprint, we'll hit save. When I get out of this, let me just close it. And when we go back in here, it's asking for our fingerprint. And then we can get back in here. Very good security feature to have. We also have theme options. We can set the theme to day, night, auto. This is what the night theme looks like. Setting it to auto will adjust based on your system's theme. Under settings, we have language options, setup wizard, so you can choose how you want to set up your device, including adding USB storage. You can revoke permissions from there as well. Crash reporting, Google Analytic, notifications, again, going back to notifications. You can choose to show the bottom bar tab titles root access, temp folder, you can disable stack notifications, keep the screen on, retain syncing logs, enable automation for deep links, set a backup folder, backup database and restore. So, so this is really good if you want to back up the database and restore it. I've been using DS file and I ranted about how Synology just does not care about its mobile apps. This has been one of the best apps I've used for connecting to cloud services. I tested it with Backblaze, S3, WebDAP, so I'm very happy with it. And that is Folder Sync for Android. <music>